Welcome to part two of my comparison video series. If you haven't seen part one, you'll find the link in the description below. I recommend you watch that one first, and then you come back to this one. I'm going to cover high frame rates in this video, and I'm going to start right off with the uh, fall scene that I had from the first video. So this is just 30 frames per second, 4K, same as the, uh, as the first video. And side by side, they're looking relatively similar. They each have a lot of detail and, and good color. And I'll punch in 300% so you can see the, some of the detail in the image. To my eye, the Blackmagic RAW footage has the most detail out of the three here. And then I'll move to 60 frames per second. It's 50% slower because we have twice as many frames. And it still looks pretty good. All three of these cameras shoot 4K 60 frames per second. The GH5S is at 8-bit, the E2 is at 10-bit, and the Blackmagic is at 12-bit RAW. I'm going to pause it here so we can get a better look at the details. I can see some of the compression in both the E2 and the GH5S, and of course the raw image doesn't have that kind of compression. It's sensor data. It doesn't have any of that macro blocking. I'm going to go really crazy and zoom into 600% so we can really pixel peep the E2 and the GH5S. Actually, it looks like there's like a Photoshop filter on it, like a mosaic effect. The details are kind of modeled together, and of course, at 600%, you're gonna see all this kind of stuff. People watch your video at home on their small mobile phone or whatever, they're not gonna see this detail. Also, YouTube's gonna apply its VP9 codec to your footage, so it's gonna have some more compression uh, artifacts added to it. But you know, later on, when YouTube gets a better codec, they'll re-encode your video, and it will actually be better than what you're seeing here. Now, when we step it up to 120 frames per second, things get a little different. The Zcam E2 is the only camera of these three that will give you 4K 120 frames per second. It will also give you a full sensor readout of that 4K image, so it doesn't crop in, it doesn't give you a windowed version of that sensor. That 4K 120 is the reason I bought this camera. If you watch some of my cosplay videos, you see that I'm using some slow motion in places, and this 4K 120 will slow down a lot, like a quarter speed of regular speed, and give you some really nice slow movements. The Blackmagic and the GH5S will give you 1080 120 frames per second, so it's a much lower resolution. Also, the Blackmagic gives you a windowed crop of the sensor. It doesn't give you the full sensor readout, so it has the appearance of being zoomed in. The good news is, the Blackmagic looks really good at 1080 120 frames per second. It's still recording RAW and ProRes, and at proportionate bit rates. There's very little loss of quality at 120 frames per second. You're just getting the lower resolution of 1080p. The GH5S, on the other hand, gives you the full sensor readout, but it's then scaled down to 1080p. The image quality is good, but not as good as the Blackmagic. The increased frame rate is very taxing on the processor and the camera, so what it does is it reduces the bit rate to accommodate for that processing. That in turn results in a lower image quality. Here side by side you can tell that the E2 is the only camera that has the full 4K resolution. The GH5S is at 1080, so I've scaled it to twice the size. And the Blackmagic, you can see how small that windowed crop is. At 4K60, all three of these cameras do a great job. You can tell that they were meant to do 4K60. There's really no loss in quality compared to uh, lower resolutions or lower frame rates, except that the GH5S only records at 8-bit in frame rates over 4K30. And jumping all the way up to 120 frames per second, we can see that massive crop in on the Blackmagic, but the image quality is still really good. We are getting proportionate bit rates for 1080 compared to 4K, and the color looks pretty good. Now, you gotta understand, when you get up to 120 frames per second, the cameras can start to suffer when you get away from low ISOs. If you don't have enough light, you can start to get really degraded image quality pretty quickly. I can see it especially on the E2, if I go too far north of that uh, native ISO, it starts to drop off in quality a lot. The bit rate is much lower at 120 frames per second on the E2. It goes from around 200 at a uh, 4K30 down to maybe the 60s. Like it's, it's a lot less of a bit rate. It still looks pretty good, but you have to keep it at the native ISO and you have to have a lot of light. If it's not properly exposed, it's gonna suffer.
Here I've zoomed in on that beanbag shot. This maybe was slightly underexposed. This was, you know, a pretty bright day, sunshine and everything. You can see down here, there's some loss of detail. That grass is kind of gray in areas. That means it just doesn't have color information. And here, the shot of the slide, it looked pretty good, you know, at first glance. But when you zoom in, you take a look at this, you can see there's a lot of information missing in, in his jeans there. There's this weird noise pattern. The back of the, of the sweatshirt is kind of gray. It just doesn't have a lot of information there. And the GH5S has the full sensor readout, but it's 1080p. It still looks pretty good. The image quality is not as good as it is at 4K60. I'm gonna sidestep away from high frame rates for just a second. Uh, in my last video, when I did the rolling shutter test, I have been shooting the E2 in wide dynamic range mode, and it's, it's great, it gives you a little increase in dynamic range, but there are some caveats, and one of those is the sensor readout speed is twice as slow, which meant the rolling shutter was twice as bad as the other two cameras. So here, I've redone that shot with the E2 in normal dynamic range, and you can see as I pause it that, yeah, the E2 has a little bit more rolling shutter, but not nearly as much as it did when it was in wide dynamic range. It's pretty close to the other two cameras. I think the GH5S is still slightly faster than the other two. This is some 4K 60 footage uh, at night with some higher ISO so we can see the noise at this higher frame rate. The Blackmagic is at ISO 800, the E2 at 320, and the GH5S at 1000. And when I put them side by side, we see that they have about the same amount of noise. This is expected again because they're using a very similar sensor. Uh, the Blackmagic in RAW has a different noise pattern, but it's still about the same amount of noise. I think if you put some noise reduction on these, they'd look pretty good. All three of them would look pretty good. Uh, this isn't that bad. Uh, if you raise the frame rate to, say, 120, it would be a different story. But honestly, you, you don't want to be shooting at a high frame rate with a high ISO. It's just going to be ugly. How ugly? Well, let's take a look. Here's some 120 frame per second footage. The Blackmagic is at ISO 1600. The E2 is at 1250. I also recorded it at 1080p so that it matches the uh, resolution of the other two cameras. And the GH5S I didn't make a note of what ISO it's at, and it doesn't have ISO information in its metadata. It's like the only bit of information that's missing, so I'm guessing it's somewhere between 1250 and 1600 based on the other two cameras. The E2 and the GH5S actually look pretty good. I'll have to take back what I said. Uh, this is a 1080p, 120 frames per second, and besides the resolution being a little bit lower, it's pretty clean, and you could apply some noise reduction and reduce that even more. I, I do see that there's a little bit less definition in the blacks, uh, it, you just lose a little bit of that information at the higher frame rate and the higher ISO. So let's try to level the playing field a bit by reducing the size of the Blackmagic footage so it's basically the same scale as the other two cameras. But even doing this kind of cheating, it's not as clean as the other two cameras. It's just not going to be as clean because it's not using the full size of the sensor. And we are not afraid of 240 frames per second. Here it is, but only the E2 and the GH5S can do 240 frames. The Blackmagic tops out at 120. Side by side, you can see that there's different things going on here. You'll notice the flickering. I didn't take any precautions to avoid the flicker. The E2 looks sharper. The GH5S looks cleaner. That's because the E2 is over sharpened with the current firmware and the GH5S is applying too much noise reduction. It's actually reduced the amount of detail in the image. But I think the GH5S looks better here. The blacks look like black, whereas in the E2, the blacks look blue because of the, of the noise. And there's really no good way of cleaning that up. You could apply noise reduction, but you can't change the color of that noise. It's just not as good as the GH5S, but they both look pretty poor. And one other point, the GH5S is cropped in. It's not as big of a crop as the Blackmagic camera, but it's not giving you the full sensor read, whereas the E2 is still giving you the full sensor readout. So I was at the Oregon coast for the holidays, and I went out on the rainiest day. I purposely chose a rainy day because I wanted to go out and, and shoot in this challenging environment. And it really paid off because I got some really cool footage here. Uh, this is called the Devil's Churn. It's at Cape Perpetua, south of Newport, Oregon. This is a cool little natural area that has this ravine, the water, the waves go all the way back in and they splash against the walls the whole way down. I set up fairly close to the edge and I got some really nice splashing. So this is really great footage for comparing the high frame rates. I get to slow it down. Sometimes with water, it's hard to tell if it's regular speed or if it's slow motion, but here you can see the difference. 
So again, the Blackmagic has that windowed crop at 1080p, 120 frames per second. The E2 has the full sensor readout, 4K, 120 frames per second. And the GH5S has 1080p, 120 frames as well, just like the Blackmagic. But it's not windowed crop, it's the full sensor readout scaled down to 1080p. So what can you do with 120 frame per second footage? Well, you can speed it up to normal speed, and just as the action hits, you can slow it down to quarter speed, and then you can ramp it back up to normal speed, and you can even double it and make it twice as fast if you want. But hey, this is 120 frames per second, so we want that nice slow motion. And one more time at 240 frames per second. It's kind of the same story. The E2 has more noise than the GH5S, and the GH5S, it looks pretty good even though it's softening the details. So how about a quick tutorial on how to do these speed changes in DaVinci Resolve? It's actually not that hard. Actually, it's one of the reasons I like using Resolve because it's pretty easy to do these kind of ramps. So we'd start off, you have just a clip like this in the timeline, you want to view the retime curve. So you right click on the clip, select retime curve, and you get something like this. And you can also click on retime controls or Apple R, control R on Windows, and you get this. And with these two tools, you can easily make adjustments. So down here on this retime curve, you can put your timeline somewhere like this and click a little dot. Now you've added a point there. You can move this point like this, but see how it changes your speed up here? These are changing, that's not what you want. You want to set your points, and then you can use this little slider here, well, or the drop down, to change your speed. So you can go 50%, you can see it'll, it'll stretch that out really wide. If I put it at 100%, changes the timing. So this will play back at 25% of normal speed, which is 100% for a 120 frames per second video clip. And if you want to change the, the timing between these two, you can just drag these, and now you change the relationship of how much of this is 100%, how much is at 800%, and so on and so forth. And then you can change the ramp between these two by selecting it and clicking on this one. And you can see it gives you these handles and you can just drag these out and it'll change how it transitions between those speeds. And if you hold Command on Mac, I think that's Control on Windows, you can grab one handle and change one side of it so you have different ramps on each side of that point. And you just right click and turn these back off. And there you go, when you play it back, it's doing your speed ramps. It's not too hard. Thanks again for joining me for yet another video, and this one also ran a little bit longer than I thought it would, and I still haven't covered chroma key, so I'm gonna do that in my next video where I'm also going to talk about what's up with the red color, that red push, and also the red channel issue that is in DaVinci Resolve. So uh, click like, subscribe, leave some comments down below, and hit that notification icon if you wanna know when my next video is up. Thanks guys.